Good morning. Today we will be discussing logical equivalence. So we'll start with tautology, contradiction, and contingency. So tautology is a statement which has only the decision value of one, or shall we say a statement or assertion that is true in every possible interpretation. When we say contradictory, this is a statement which is always false. While a contingent statement is neither a tautology nor a contradic contradictory. So show that the following are tautology, contradictory, and contingent statements. So we have here four examples. Now let's have the solutions. Now look, we have the proposition P and then mm, this junction not P or P or not P. So for our proposition P, we have one. And then we have 0. Okay. So next we need the not P or the, the negation of P. So therefore 1 will become 0. And then 0 will become 1. And then we use the disjunction. Remember the rule for disjunction. For disjunction, as long as you have 1 or true, that is true. So therefore the first is 1. Then we also have 1. So 1, 1. So this is an example of Tautology. Why tautology? Always true. Now let's have the next one. P and not P. Again, you have the proposition P as 1 and then 0. So not P is the negation. So 1 will, be, will become 0 and then 0 will become 1. And then we have the um, conjunction. So we have P and not P. So remember in conjunction, okay, if P is true, Q is true, then it's true or else false. So this is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 is 0. An easier way, as long as you have 0, it is 0 or false. So therefore, the result is 0, 0 or false, false. Therefore, it is what? A contradiction. Okay? Let's move. Number 3. P implies not P. Again, we have the proposition P. Here, proposition P as 1 then 0 therefore not p is the negation so 1 will become 0 0 will become 1 and then we have the implication so remember implication political propaganda 1 uh, 1 0 that is 0 0 1 that is 1 so here it is not a tautology nor a contradiction so therefore it is a contingency let's have the last one number 4 we have uh, the not P and Q or Q implies P. So we need the propositions P, Q. So we have P and then we have Q. So here is the pattern 1100, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Then we need the negation of P. Therefore, negate P. 1 will become 0, 0, uh, 1 will become 0, 0, 0 will become 1, 1. That's correct. And then we use that uh, not P column and then conjunction Q. So not P and Q. So you are looking at 0 going 1, 0 and 1, that is 0. Remember, in conjunction, as long as you have 0, that is 0. So 0 or uh, and 0, 0 and 0, that is also 0. 1 and 1, that is 1. 1 and 0, 0. Next is Q implies P. Remember uh, implication? Yeah, for implication, that is uh, political propaganda. Okay? 1, 1 here, that is 1. 0, 1. 1, 1, 0, that is 0. 0, 0, that is 1. And then, we use these two columns and then the, uh, the operator conjunction or end. So remember conjunction, as long as you have 0, it is 0. So 0, 0 and 1, that is 0, 0, 0, 0. So therefore, that is a contradiction. Okay? So we move. Logical equivalence. Two statements are logically equivalent if their statement of material equivalence has the only decision value 1. The compound proposition P and Q are called logically equivalent if... Uh, P implies Q is a tautology. Uh, P if and only if Q is a tautology. The notation P 
is logically, logically equivalent to Q denotes that P and Q are logically equivalent. So, in short, when we say logically equivalent, as long as the, the columns are, are the same, or the material of that column are the same, therefore, the, the, the statements could be logically equivalent. So, here we have an example. So, we have P. Is it logically equivalent to the negation of the negation of P? So, we need P. P is... 1, then 0. Now, we have to develop the not not p. So, first not p, it will be 0, then 1. Now, negate it again, it will become 1, then 0. So, look, 1, 0, and then another 1, 0. Because p and the negation of negation of p have the same decision values, then they are logically equivalent. Okay? So, again, look at this. 1, 0, and then 1, 0. They are logically equivalent. Okay, next, show that not P and Q and not P or not Q are equivalent. So, we need, again, the two uh, propositions, P, then Q. Okay, so we have 1, 1, 0, 0. That's correct. Then 1, 0, 1, 0. Now, first, we have to do this, P and Q. Remember the rule for conjunction, 1, 1 is 1 or else 0. That's correct. Next, negate it because we need that for this one. So, negation of that will become 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay? And then for the next uh, next part of our uh, logical equivalence, we need not P. So, you look at P, then negate it. Look, that's a negation. So, 1, 1, 0, 0 became 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. That's okay. And then we also need not Q, which is the negation of Q. So, that is 0, 1, 0, 1. And then we apply the, the disjunction for this two. So, disjunction. So, therefore, we have, remember disjunction, as long as you have 1, that is 1. So, we have 0, 0, it is 0, then 1, 1, 1. Now, look. This one is this. And then, this one is this column. Are they the same? Yes, they have the same decision values. Therefore, they are logically equivalent. Okay, we move to the third example. Show that P and uh, Q or R and P and Q or Q, P and R are logically equivalent. So, this time we need three propositions, the P, Q, and R. Now, on our last discussion, I already explained how to <coughs> do the pattern. So, four ones and then zero, two one zeros, two zeros, then one zero one zero for PQR. Next, we need this one, Q or R. So, look at column Q, column R. Now, we use the disjunction that is one, 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 zero, one, 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 zero. Okay? There's no problem with that column. Next is P and this column p and this column so we have one and one that is one this time we are using conjunction one and one is one also one also one or one and zero is zero zero and one is zero and then we have all those zeros so therefore it is zero okay now we move to the next part which is this the p and q so, you look at the columns P and Q. Now, we use the uh, conjunction. P and Q. So, that is 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Correct. Next, we have P and R. So you look at column P and you look at column R. That is 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. Then, we use the uh, operator disjunction. As long as you have one, it is one. Okay, referring to this. So that is one, correct? Then one again, one again, then all zeros. Okay, now to prove that they are logically equivalent, you look, you look at this column and then for this one and then you look for this one, which is this. Now are they the same? Yes, I think they are the same. They have the same decision values. Therefore, they are logically equivalent.
Now this time let's discuss the replacement rules. Okay, so here are some replacement rules. The commutation or the commutative property or commutative rule. We have also the association or the associative rule. Now remember in commutative commutative rule, you are uh, pertaining to the order, right? Order of the propositions. Now look at the first one, P or Q is logically equivalent to Q or P. Meaning, uh, if it is an OR or a disjunction, okay, again, commutation or commutative property is about the order of the propositions. Meaning, even though we change the order of the propositions using uh, used for disjunction or conjunction, still they are logically equivalent. The next one is the association or the associative property, meaning the groupings. As long as you have the same order and they have the same operator, therefore, it will be logically equivalent though you change the groupings of the proposition. Next, we have the distribution or the distributive rule. So, for distributive, ru distributive rule, now you, you, as you can see, now let's say we have this one, uh, the first one, P and Q or R. So, therefore, you use this one uh, I'll just zoom it then okay now look at this one so let's say we have P then we use the operator conjunction or end okay and then we have or okay as the operator inside the parenthesis therefore for distribution uh, if you still remember your high school days, the distributive property of equality, you just multiply P, then Q. But this time, you are not multiplying actually, but you are applying the, the proposition outside the quantity and the operator before the quantity. So therefore, that is P and Q, right? And then the other one is should be P and R. So that is P and Q, and then P and R, okay? So what happened to the operator inside the quantity? The operator inside the quantity will be the operator between the quantities. Okay? So it's the same thing with the other one. That is distribution or distributive rule. Now, for the next one, we have the De Morgan's, uh, De Morgan's uh, law or De Morgan's rule. So here for the De Morgan's, now this is a very important okay we will use this uh extremely for the next topics or for our uh, a few exercises after this okay we uh, this will be used commonly to most of our activities now the de morgans is is a negation outside the quantity and you have an operator inside the the, the parenthesis or the quantity now the operator inside the quantity could be a disjunction or a conjunction. Now, let's say we have this one. So, first thing to do, if you have a negation out uh, before the quantity, therefore, you can simply uh, negate the both the proposition. So, it will become a not P and then a not Q. But, if you do that, the operator between the two quantities will change. So, if it is a disjunction, you will change it to conjunction. Same with the other one. You have a a, a, a negation outside the quantity therefore find the negation of p that's not p negation of q not q and then the operator is end or a conjunction therefore it will become a disjunction okay so that's the de morgan's de morgan's law okay next one is the double negation i've already explained this early on in our previous example the double negation will suggest that you go back to your original proposition a not not p the not not the double negation will cancel one another right so that is logically equivalent to the proposition itself itself next is the transposition let's say we have a p implies q now remember this now they are logically equivalent if if we will retain the the implication, it's the same thing, implies and still implies, but the hypothesis or the premise will become the conclusion. 
and you should negate it. And then the conclusion will become the premise, but this time it's a negation. So it is logically equivalent to not Q implies not P. Okay, so that's transposition. The next one is the material implication. This one is also uh, very useful to our next uh, exercises, this material implication. P implies Q. That P implies Q, now all you need to do is to uh, negate the first one or the first proposition. So therefore, your P will become not P here. Your P will become not P, and then you just copy your second proposition. But this time, the implication will become a disjunction. Okay? Implication will become disjunction, or. So that's material implication. Okay, the next one is the tautology, or the idempotent loss in some books. If we have P or P, and Okay, the P or P, that is logically equivalent to P. If we have a P and P, still, it is P. Okay? The other one is the material equivalence, the topmost. Okay, P if and only if Q is logically equivalent to. So you can see here, we have the implication of P and Q. So P implies Q. Then we have Q implies P. Okay? They just switch their position then we have this operator between them which is the conjunction and then same p if and only if and only if q again here right but if we choose to use the disjunction you have to negate the two propositions then use the uh, conjunction as an operator Next, we have the exportation. The exportation, let's say we have P and Q implies R. It is the same thing as P implies Q implies R. Now, the identity loss, we have P and true is logically equivalent to P. P or false is still P. Now, the domination loss, P or true is true. P and false is false. And then for the complement loss, P and not, ah, uh, no. P or not P is true. Then P and not P is false. That's complement loss. Now, you have to remember that. You may take a screenshot of this as well as this following example. Constructing new logical equivalent. Show that P implies Q and not Q implies not P are logically equivalent. Okay? So here, now, what you need to do in, in presenting a proof, you simply copy the first uh, combination of uh, propositions, then, then you process it. Okay, now our objective is to change this to this form to prove that they are logically equivalent. Okay, so P implies Q. Now, we use the material implication. Remember material implication? Negate, negate P, done. Copy Q, done. Then implies or implication will become a disjunction, done. Next, by commutative law. Why do we need the commutative law? Look at this uh, proposition, not Q. So therefore, you have to change it. Uh, in such a way that it will follow the, the pattern. So it will become Q or not P. So what we did is use the, the commutative law. And then after that, we negate the first one. We change or to end and then we copy the not P. Okay? So that is material implication. So as you can see, this is logically equivalent to this. Right? Now let's move. Show that not P implies Q implies R and Q implies P and uh, P or R are logically equivalent. So again, what you need to do is to choose which one is easier to understand or to, to, to process. So we choose this one, this one. So not P, we just copy. Okay. 
since you have the 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 implication here now apply immediately the material implication so how will you do that negate the first one negate okay that's negation and then copy okay okay so what happened here okay what he did is to apply the material implication outside the quantity and then apply also the material implication inside the quantity as you can see he did another uh, process inside the quantity you can queue the queue no take this one q okay what he did is take the negation of it change implication to or and then copy r okay so he did that also outside the quantity negation of p that's why it's a double negation p change implication to or okay next is apply the double negation so it's here not not p will become p and that's double negation you just copy the other quantity next p and what he did is to change the position of r and not q that's commutative law okay and then after that what he did is to change the groupings instead of r or not q he uh, what we did is to combine p or r right p or r and then we have outside the quantity or not q that's associative law remember associative law as long as you have the same connectives okay you may change the groupings but do not change the arrangement next is uh if you refer to this one q is the first proposition so we change their position we have the not q or p or r again guys they have the same connectives so we may freely change their position as well as their grouping so this time we apply the commutative law and then look we are after the connective implication since we have an or therefore you can simply use the material implication how to do it negate the first so that's q change this junction to implication and then copy okay so therefore they are logically equivalent okay take a screenshot and then study it now next number three show that p implies q and p implies q is a tautology how are we going to do this so first thing to do since we would like to prove that it is a tautology okay so p implies q will uh this one this is the first quantity let me zoom it first so here okay we're after the tautology therefore here is your first quantity so copy this is an implication so we may apply the material implication okay how do you do that so negation of the first so that's correct change implication to or or this junction copy the next proposition so we're done with the with this one next is de morgan's law remember de morgan's law in de morgan's law we have a negation outside the quantity therefore you have to take the negation of the first one so it's here negation of the second one it's here but you have to change the operator from conjunction it became disjunction okay now next thing to do is to analyze what's inside the quantity you still have an implication inside the quantity so if it's if it is an implication and then we would like to prove that it is a tautology so we don't need that implication change this or use the material implication also your p will become a not p and then your q is still the same but we will be using disjunction and then or 
copy again, not P, copy again, and then still the negation outside the quantity. So I think we do not have any problem with that material implication. Next, we have a negation outside the quantity. Look, a negation outside the quantity, so meaning we may apply that negation to what's inside the quantity. So negate the first, so that's a double negation P, change OR to end, and then negation of Q. And then copy the rest. So that's De Morgan's law, if it's an, a negation outside. Next, by double negation, I think we don't need the other P. This is simply P. Okay, P and not Q. In double negation, if you have a not not, you just cancel it, and then we copy everything. Next, by commutative loss, so here, for commutative loss, since we have... <coughs> Okay, so here we don't need this one. Okay, but I think we uh, I accidentally ex Okay, so this one. This is simply P. So we have P and not Q. Now, what we did is the commutative law. But as you can see, I accidentally changed the, the sign here. This should be conjunction. Right? So we have a not P, which is from here, not P, and then we retain the disjunction, and then the quantity P and not Q. Okay? Next is apply the associative. Actually, it's not the associative law, it should be the distributive. Okay? distributive law for the distributive law we simply multiply somehow we seems we multiply it but actually we combine the first two quantities and then retain the pro uh, connective or and then the other one that is not p again or not q so here and then copy the uh, the connective end or conjunction okay between the quantities then still we have the not uh, or q outside those quantities next is we apply the commutative law so the commutative law we just uh, change the position of p and then the, the not p or p so it became p or not p okay and then we still got end copy and then copy also the remaining part of the so i'm still missing the not q okay then by negation law the p or not p is true so that's true okay and retain not p or not q it's here and then or q is still here next that's neg negation law. Again, we use the commutative law. So the commutative law, uh, we just change their positions. So the not P or not Q became the first proposition, then retain end or this conjunction, and then retain true, and then or Q. That's commutative law. The next one, uh, that's identity law, right? A certain proposition and true is the proposition itself that is identity law okay now we may eliminate the next line because it's still the same we don't need this one the next is okay using the associative law as you can see both of our connectives or operators are uh, disjunction so we may change the groupings okay so that is associative law next we retain the not p we retain the connective disjunction and then we change the position of not q or q it become q or not q that's commutative law now the q or not q 
is also true by negation law. You refer to the table I presented earlier. So therefore, not P or true is true by domination law. Okay? Therefore, we have proven that this is a tautology. Okay? So please make the necessary adjustments on my uh, presentation. Uh, it so happened I committed some typographical error because it's somehow confusing while preparing this one. Okay, let's go to number four. Show that it is a contradictory or contradiction. So we have this quantity and we have to prove that it is a contradiction. So let me zoom it first. So let's say, okay, we simply copy this one. Now observe it. We have, again guys, we have here the implication, right? So that's the first thing to do. By material implication, what are we going to do with this quantity? We negate the first. We change implies to this junction. And then we copy P. So that's material implication. So no implications here. Next is P. This one. We copy this. Look, it's still the same. And then still we have the this junction, a conjunction, but we change the position of this one. That's commutative law. Right? Next. We use the De Morgan's law, but this time it's the, the reverse form of it. Okay? I'll, uh, I will try to explain earlier why we have to do that. Okay? I, I will try to explain later why do we have to do that. So, copy this again. The conjunction. Okay? Using the De Morgan's law, you have to write the negation outside the quantity. As you can see, we have the negation outside the quantity. Okay? Using the De Morgan's law, if you have the negation outside the quantity, meaning you have to take the negation of the first statement, or the first proposition, and the negation of the second proposition, and then if you have a disjunction, change it to conjunction. That's De Morgan's law. Right? And by double negation, we copy the not P, we copy the conjunction. The double negation not not Q will become Q by double negation. Now this time, this is somehow familiar to us, right? Why? Because this quantity is the same as this quantity, okay? And... The, the the operator or the connective between them is n. Therefore, if you have, let's say, uh, a true and a not true is false by negation law. So it's F, therefore, it is a contradictory. So that will conclude my discussion for today. But I prepared some exercises for you guys to work on. You have until tomorrow to do this. So this is exercise 1.9. Again, take a screenshot. Pause for a little while. Try to do this. And then exercise 1.10. Okay, a few exercises or questions for you. Just enjoy it. And then we have the exercise 1.11. Read the instruction carefully. And that would be all. Thank you guys. Good, good morning. And keep safe always.